Hello, this is Ringing Dimmick Johnson, and this evening's topic is, so you want to be a GM? Well, there's a lot of advice and things out there in YouTube land about how to be a GM, what to do, and here are some points from me, because I know a few things. The first rule would be to keep it simple. Keep the plots simple. Keep the reasons simple. Everything starts off with simple reasons. If you are starting with orcs attacking the outlying areas, then the reason need not be anything more than they are barbarians and raiders. Uh, that is what they do. And that is all that anyone in civilized lands knows. So uh, that is all they will tell them, of course. When the party encounters the orcs, the orcs may well have a simple reason of their own. And if for whatever reason they start talking with each other, they will probably tell them, you know, we are here because X, we are being pushed out by ogres, or uh, we are doing this for the wizard, or uh, we got pushed out by the wizard, or the wizard said, go raid this and I'll let you live. These are all fairly simple reasons. Or they might just want your loot. <laughs> they could be adventurers themselves. It just needs, you know, a simple line. You know, why are they doing this? Here's what these people think they're doing. Here's what those people think they're doing. So, uh, just keep it simple. The second point is have multiple options going on. Have multiple simple plots. Not only have orcs raiding, but have some strange wild monsters or also just out there eating people. Why are they doing that? They're setting up a nest. They're monsters. A good example would be ank eggs. It's right at the start of the monster manual. Why are the ank eggs terrorizing various farms? Well, they happen to like they happen to like nice soft soil as well. And they're making a nest and they're making more ank eggs. Why does the wizard want you to do something? He needs spell components. All wizards need spell components. And he hasn't got the time to do it himself. He wants you to go out and get them. He'll have a shopping list of things to go and get. Strange things. Odd things. A brief riff through the spell descriptions will find you a whole list of odd things and bits and bobs that wizards want for that spell component bag of theirs. And if the party has a wizard, then maybe the wizard can offer to sell them a spell. Again, keep it simple. But I have multiple options, so that if the party aren't interested in fighting orcs, that week, they can go hunt ankings, or they can go on the shopping list for the wizard. And since you get a week or a fortnight between between games, after they've done one thing and they finish one thing off, then you can entire week or fortnight come up with something else. And again, just keep it simple. But when they knock off one thing, make two. two. So that they have options. Players love having options. No player love likes being railroaded and being sent down an obvious track of where they have to go. If they get options, then they get to choose what they want to do. They get some agency. They feel like they are the heroes. Point three. Listen to your players. Your players will form ideas of their own about what's going on in the world. They will, want, they will have their own ideas why the Ankhigs are moved in, why the Orcs are raiding, why the Wizard wants, wants all these spell components. They come up with an idea that you think it sounds pretty good, write it down. And then introduce it in the next session. You know, they they decide for themselves that the orcs are being displaced by ogres, then once you run out of orcs, have ogres turn up. The party was expecting them, so why don't we reward that expectation? Let them encounter ogres. Or they come up with an idea of why the wizard is collecting these spell components, maybe he needs to finish a you know, maybe when they decide, oh, he's doing a ritual, he's coming up with something. Then have him do that, have him be up to something. Beforehand, you had nothing more complicated than he wants these spell components. But now the players have actually supplied you with a reason. Use that resource. Players often come up with better ideas than you can, because, well, they're three or four people, and they can come up with three or four more three or four ideas each, and, you know, one of them could be good. Number four. NPCs. 
the heart of any role-playing game is your interactions with NPCs. Make, your, some of your, make some interesting NPCs. The Orc Leader. Make him a slightly interesting person. You know, he's ambitious. He has reasons for why he wants this loot. Maybe he's just an adventurer, like you. Maybe he wants to do a deal with you. Maybe he knows of a place where you could both go and raid together. The wizard. Make the wizard an interesting PC. And in whatever base they're operating out of, have some interesting people there. People they often meet. They'll probably want to talk with a blacksmith. They'll want they'll definitely want to talk to the tavern keeper. Have a local bard or a news bringer. Someone who brings in news to how's our watch. You can have them introduce a new news item every session, you know. The bard says, you know, this has happened in the far-off lands, or this is going on, or there has been a plague of geese, whatever it is. But a simple news item, just, or even just, you know, read read the newspaper, what, is, what has happened that week, and then fancy it up a little. You know, the newspapers often talk of taxes, and immigrations, and wars in far-off places. Describe that in a fantasy in a fantasy way. Speak. There is a news of the ongoing war in the Middle East. Then have have the local bard speak of the ongoing war in the far off lands to secure the silk trade against the hobgoblins. And maybe that war is going well. Or that war is going badly. So have interesting PCs. And have some news. Doesn't have to be complicated news again, it just has to be very simple. Rule 5. Again, listen to your players. Find out what they want. Find out what sort of genre or fantasy they like. You know, do they like Lord of the Rings? Do they prefer Game of Thrones? Are they want the sword and sorcery thing? They like Morcock or Conan. Find out what they like, what sort of game do they want to be in? And then reward them. That. Try and craft the game around their expectations. If you're not playing the same, playing the game in a genre that you don't particularly like, then it's not a lot of fun for anyone. If everyone's playing in a genre that everyone wants to play in, like you're all mad Tolkien fans, then have a Tolkien squirreled. And if you prefer Conan, and a bunch of hardy adventurers off to fight mad sorcerers and crazed demons and fight mad sorcerers and crazed demons. And so those are the main things I would focus on in starting the campaign, in starting D&D. Keep it simple. Listen to your players. Have multiple plots. Multiple simple plots. Have interesting NPCs. And again, listen to your players. Thank you.